True Bacardian, Steve. And you know, uh, 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 lately I've been making videos and I say, this is a subscriber request. This is a subscriber request. I wonder if anyone ever thinks, Steve, you can't possibly get that many people making requests. Well, anyway, would I lie? I'm a former police officer. Okay, so I had a, a request and it's about making a video about mules. So what I'm going to do, this, I'm, going to, I'm going to recite the poem first and then it will be in my uh, bush, bush poems, bush ballads section and at the end I'll tell you a fascinating story behind the poem. So, oh the airman's game is a showman's game for we all of us watch him go with his roaring, soaring aeroplane and his bombs for the blokes below. Over the railways and over the dumps, over the Hun and the Turk, you'll hear him mutter, what ho, oh, she bumps, when the Archies get to work. But not of him is the song I sing, though he follow the eagle's flight, and with shrapnel holes in his splintered wing, comes home to his roost at night. He may silver his wings on the shining stars, he may look from the throne on high. He may follow the flight of the wheeling kite in the blue Egyptian sky. But he's only a hero built to plan, turned out by the army schools. And I sing of the rankless, thankless man who hustles the army mules. Now where he comes from and where he lives is a mystery dark and dim. And it's rarely indeed that the general gives him a DS. And it's rarely indeed that the general gives a DSO to him. The stolid infantry digs its way like a mole in a ruined wall. The cavalry lends a tone, they say, to what were else but a brawl. The brigadier of the mounted foot like a cavalry colonel swanks, when he goeth abroad like a gildeth nut to receive the general's thanks. The ordnance man is a son of a gun, and his lists are a standing joke. The order, choke arty Jerusalem one, for Jerusalem arty choke. The medics shine with a number nine, and the men of the great RE, their colonels are Methodist, married or mad, and some of them are all three. In all the units, the road to fame is taught by the army schools, but a man has got to be born to the game when he tackles the army's mules. For if you go where the depots are, where the dawn is breaking grey, by the waning light of the morning star and the dust cloud clears away, you'll see a vision among the dust like a man and a mule combined. It's the kind of thing you must take on trust for its outlines aren't defined. A thing that whirls like a spinning top and props like a three-legged stool and you'll find it's a long-legged Queensland boy convincing an army mule. And the rider sticks to the hybrid's hide like paper sticks to a wall for a magnoon whaler is next to ride with every chance of a fall. It's a roughhouse game and a thankless game and it isn't a game for a fool. For the army's fate and a nation's fame may turn on an army mule. And if you go to the frontline camp where the sleepless outposts lie, at the dead of night you can hear the tramp of the mule train toiling by and the rattle and clink of a leading chain and the creak of a lurching load. A 
short pause as a gale of wind came through, the rattle and clink of the leading chain and the creak of the lurching load as the patient plodding creatures strain at their task in the shell-torn road. Through the dark and the dust you may watch them go till the dawn is grey in the sky and only the watchful pickets know when the all-night call goes by. And far away as the silence falls when the last of the train is gone, a weary voice through the darkness Get on there, men! Get on! It isn't a hero built to plan, turned out by modern schools. It's only the army service man a driving his army mules. So if you've stuck with me this far through the poem and a few hiccups with the wind, that poem was written by Banjo Patterson. Banjo Patterson was too old to serve in World War I, but he was a brilliant horseman, an outstanding polo player, and so as soon as the Australian Army said they needed someone to help set up the training for horses in Australia to go to the Western Front in the Middle East, he volunteered, he was immediately made an officer, he was very shortly thereafter promoted, and then by 19, early 1916, He's been sent to the Middle East where he deals with 50,000 horses. He runs a remount depot. He's in charge of it himself. And in the course of the war, he puts 50,000 horses through the remount depot and 10,000 mules. So there you go, 10,000 mules in the Australian Army through World War I. Sorry, 10,000 mules in the Australian Army that just go through Banjo Patterson's remount depot. He had a great fondness for mules and one of his great quotes from that period of time was that every single person in Australia who owned an incorrigible sold it to the army. I just, I just love that, because he doesn't say, hey, he had an incorrigible whaler or an incorrigible horse or they had a bad horse. He simply says, everyone in Australia who had an incorrigible sold it to the army. He doesn't even know what incorrigible means, because he's too bloody lovely. But there you go. So Banjo Patterson, that's the poem about the army mules, especially for a subscriber. I wonder if you lasted this long. Cheers, Cobber. Till next time.